my name is David Raphael. I'm a landscape architect, um, and I'm here with my uh, colleague here, Bob Neal from Engineering Ventures. He is a uh, an engineer, structural engineer. I'm a I said I'm a landscape architect, and we sort of set up this little get together today, and then a workshop in about 45 minutes uh, to get uh, local input on the future of this bridge, which, as you probably know, is going to be replaced hopefully in the near future. Um, so we're you know, one of the things is um, we're kind of looking at the bridge today and how it's functioned. But we also would love your thoughts and, and any questions you have about um, what happens if, when this bridge is rebuilt, um, there might be an opportunity to re-envision what this side of the river looks like or even maybe what the other side of the river might look like kind of in conjunction with, uh, with the rebuilt of the bridge. And I know, Bob, if you just want to take one minute or two to sort of say why we're at this point, and I'm going to ask you to repeat it again when we get over there. Sure. But. Yeah, um, the, um, the, the bridge here um, has gone through a number of, uh, of changes, and um, most of them not very good. There's some deterioration of the framing. There's uh, There were some details that were put together that were not very smart for the sound. A few things are broken. So uh, two engineers have come to the conclusion that we should not be occupying the bridge. So here we are, we're moving into what do we do next? And so, as David said, today we're trying to figure out um, what what should a new bridge look like? And there are a lot of alternatives, uh, and everything from uh, rebuilding something very similar to what we have here to uh, a more modern uh, you know, pre-manufactured bridge and, um, and, and that kind of thing. So a lot of alternatives, and we'd love to hear some of your input of what you'd like to see. Um, so, any of you have any questions or want to relate any of your experiences or thoughts with the bridge and, and this side of the of the bridge at all? Um, no, this is sort of the first step of that, is to sort of get your thoughts and any, you know, comments or concerns you have. I mean, are you, I assume you're Hardwick residents, and um, what, I mean, I'm curious to know what your experience is with the bridge here, thoughts about it? I love this structure because it, I think it adds to downtown with lights on it, you know, it's festive and it kind of feels become, like something is, you know, going on. Yeah. And, um, you know, one thing that's kind of interesting is that in some places, bridges are designed that kind of become a destination in themselves that yeah. people want to just hang out on and, and kind of experience. I don't know if any of you have been uh, down into the Champlain Valley where they rebuilt the, the Champlain Bridge that goes from Vermont to New York. And when they and that's for cars, obviously, but when they rebuilt it, they put in sidewalks on both sides. And now people just come to the bridge to walk over and back because it's, it's such an amazing experience to be suspended over Lake Champlain and seeing the boats coming and going. You know, and that's a thought here, you know, kind of you're suspended over the river and you know, some of the questions are, do you have a little bump out? So that when you're in the middle of the bridge, you can sort of step out and kind of look down. Do we want to think about making the bridge wide enough for, um, you know, bikes and people both? You know, what would that look like? So, um, you know, I don't know. Dave, do you have any thoughts or anything you want to say? Yeah, uh, Dave Gross, I'm chair of the planning commission, so go figure, planning. Yeah. Um, and uh, part of the uh, ideas here besides the connect one side to the other which we'll notice when we try to go over there we have a long walk around but it's a little tour of the neighborhoods too um, but it is also the idea that we have this beautiful river here which is a natural area and really isn't accessible or recognized right now except for a few people in the know and there's beautiful fish down there. You can see from the diner window, people come down there and sometimes cool off down there, but it really isn't utilized as much as it can be. And one of the things about Hardwick is, yes, we have our storefronts here, but we don't have the kind of quiet green space to kind of to gather and sit down. And this would be a nice stepping off Main Street type area, plus a recreational area, which I'm just gonna throw this out, by the way, state's coming through. Next fall, they're going to repave and bring 
all of Main Street here and going down, 14 and 15 up to state standards. So downtown will have a little different appearance too, and that's gonna be fall 2022. So that change, and hopefully this change, and then perhaps some of the ideas what we're going to do down along the river will really kind of give East Hardwick a little bit, I mean, excuse me, my prejudice and my thing, Hardwick, uh, 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 a little bit of a revitalization, a little sprucing up, if you will, and, and hopefully it will really keep adding to what we've seen here. The green space is getting rare. Yeah, right. <laughs> Is there any kind of thought of making the river more accessible? Because I know yeah. you can get down there. You might kill yourself trying, but you can get down there. That's yeah. some of the things that, we're going to talk yeah. about. Yeah, and I would be interested to, to have you weigh in on what that could look like, you know, what you think that might be. Um, the other thing I just would mention right now, and we'll probably repeat ourselves over the other side, um, it's a really, really opportune time. Uh, aside from what Dave just said about the repaving here of the, of the Main Street, I'm sure most of you are aware that, you know, unfortunately, uh, COVID, we were all locked inside for a long time, uh, but correspondingly, people found ways to get outside, and, you know, I've just come out from uh, the West and the national parks, and they are experiencing numbers like they've never, ever seen before in the history of the national parks. And so there's this incredibly renewed interest in the outdoors and, and walking and biking and with it, our taxpayer dollars, yours and mine, are being funneled into opportunities, grant monies, to improve recreational infrastructure, walking infrastructure, biking infrastructure, that type of thing. So this is a really good time for those of us. There's going to be money whether we agree with that or not. It's coming to the state. I just got an email today that the Vermont Outdoor Recreational Economic Collaborative is, is, is just about to uh, open up grant uh, opportunities. Um, I've heard of several others. So there's money, and my recommendation to all our communities, and I'm a I'm a community leader in my own town, is let's go over the, get go after that money uh, to help do some things that we haven't been able to afford for quite a few years. So um, go ahead. Dick. Oh well, just throwing in one other. How many pieces are on the table right now? As you all know, the rail trail has been slightly improved for block. But the state still plans to complete it spring of 2022. And trying to get my year right. Um, and unless that gets pushed back, that means we're going to have a lot of bike traffic that is go going to be across Vermont. And once again, having an inviting, comfortable, kind of off the street place here will just encourage more business and opportunities for Hardwick. So there's a symbiosis that seems a lot of things come together at the same time. Um, so I don't know if any of you kind of have used this, this particular space at all and have any thoughts about it or uh, any, any thinking uh, or your experience with kind of being here. I'd just be curious if you want to offer something um, in that regard. Well, I definitely used to walk across the bridge a lot when it was going on, when it, when it was active. And um, some of that was just to kind of be in downtown but be in a little quieter spot. Or I would sometimes park over there. Um, I know that there were some retail spaces yeah. in that, that yeah. were really nice to access by just walking instead of having to, um, instead of having to drive around you know, to get to from right here. Yeah, interesting. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, but I really like the idea that maybe this could become more of a green, quiet area over on the other side of the bridge. That that would uh, enhance the downtown. I think that parking on the main street is problematic. Having these cars that are parallel parked, um, people going out into the crosswalks, it's still really hard to see them. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we need some other parking in town. I'd love it yeah. if there were just some really convenient parking that wasn't right on the road. Oh, interesting. I just can't imagine where it could be put, but mm. I think that's a problem for parking. And, and, and some of it just knowing where there might be spaces. I mean, I know there's a village lot right there, mm -hmm. right? And I think the village, the town has um, access to one side of the parking lot here. And so one thought is maybe some wayfinding or signing could show people, you know, park here, walk here. Yeah, make this more of a pedestrian. Yeah, I mean, I love what you said about the quiet space because, 
I, I think I would wager to say if there's some way you can sort of build something in to the riverbank, which may be a challenge because of environmental considerations and the like, that you could actually find a little nook in there where you're away from Main Street and could actually hang out with a little bit of you know peace and you know just like two poor ladies who are sitting women who are sitting here. You know, just you know, having a little quiet time. And of course, we all arrive, but uh, that there's, type of thing. There's a little green space on the right other on the other side. It's really right. nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, any other uh, thoughts or, or comments or, 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 or thinking you folks might might have? Uh, yeah, we just want to assure that, like, so the um, coffee shop the street there, and it's really nice to sort of be part of Main Street and see, you know, be part of the like. The, the happening on uh, in downtown, but the road traffic is is noisy, yeah. and so that's one of the big sort of issues with like hanging out on the sidewalk is that it's you, you sort of have to yell at the person you know you're <laughs> sitting with, and so um, doing that? with when I when this was still open, I would come out and just sort of like hang out in the middle of the bridge just to sort of be part of like downtown, but it's like a little bit quieter and you know make a phone call or whatever. <laughs> Maybe one thought we should consider is having a little space on the bridge that's a nook, kind of, where you could sort of poke out a little bit. Maybe there's a bench or something so you can actually sit, you know, over the river, maybe. I'm just thinking out loud. I don't know. I have to talk to the engineers to see how that would work and all. But um, this river is so beautiful. Come on! I don't realize that it's here and or don't really, like, Get an opportunity to see it. Yeah, I mean, so many rivers run through our little villages and are kind of hidden or inaccessible. And I think we're kind of rediscovering that, you know, a little bit. Um, you know, one thing I'd just like to ask, you know, so obviously we've got bike uh, uh, bike rack here and a couple benches, which are nice. Um, do you think there might be a need in town? And I'm asking this because I'm seeing this happen in a community right near where I live, uh, for some kind of a map board or a kiosk so that as you're walking through town, you, you have a map of the downtown and you know there's parking right there that you just walked from, there are stores around the corner, that type of thing. Would that, would that be something people might be interested in or useful, find useful? I'm just curious. Any thoughts on that? I think it would be useful, especially so. You think so? Okay, cool. Yeah. For people who have never been here before. You've never been here before? No, no, for people, oh, for people who have never been here before, it would probably be useful. I don't know about Hardwick, but I live near um, Virgen's. And of course, Virgen's comes alive in the summer because it's sort of the gateway to Lake Champlain, and there are a lot of summer people. And there's a resort right nearby called Basin Harbor. And you know, the town comes alive, but it too has a river. Otter Creek runs right through Virgen's that nobody even knows is there because it's at the bottom of the hill where the, the main street is. And so Virgen's is uh, beginning a, a plan for a wayfinding system. Uh, with pedestrian signs to get people down to the park by the river, um, which most people don't even know where they is there, you know, to provide another attraction for people who want to come to town, you know, kind of visit some of the great stores, which Hardwick clearly has, and, you know, maybe get a bite to eat and then kind of hang out by the, by the falls. I mean, beautiful falls, you know, not unlike some of the waterfalls in here um, that are pretty dramatic, so. So it's accessible because it's not a bad, bad place down here. If there's a fence around it, it was a little flatter. Yeah. And keep the trees down so people could actually see the see, river. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah and a On lot both of these, sides. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of these trees are kind of, I mean, I guess they're river. You got slippery elm and box elders and things like that, and they're they're not the best trees to have next right. to the river uh, in some ways. Well, they're good to be able to block your view. Right, that's true, yeah. So having sort of maybe a window down and it's not so it's locked up. So, well, any other thoughts or, or comments? Because maybe we should just start strolling around because within the half hour, we're going to uh, be over in the tent and we're going to have a little workshop and you're going to have a chance to kind of really weigh in. We're going to show you some different uh, ideas for bridges. Um, Bob will say another couple words. We're going to have the select board talk a little bit about uh, the next steps. Um, so, you know, I think the, the, the select board has decided um, uh, that one option is off the table now, uh, that it, and, and I'm sure Bob can speak to this, um, that repair of the bridge uh, probably doesn't make sense. And so 
the select board has decided that the bridge will be replaced or should be replaced, which I think is the right decision from where I stand, and I'm sure Bob, you would, you would agree yeah, with that. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I, I had given them an option of a, a repair that might last a couple of years, and really it's, um, it, it could happen. Um, I'd call it good money after bad. It's just you, you put in a big chunk of money in there just to get it to live it along for a few more years, and it would, uh, it would end up um, providing you a quick um, response and a quick fix, but not a long-term one and not a real good use of money. So, so that's kind of where we're at, and I guess, um, yeah, it's getting on. So uh, we're going to just mosey around the block and head over there and reconvene uh, at about 1.45 when we'll start the formal proceedings, and we hope all of you will come. We're all gathered here together today because the swinging bridge is uh, kaput, um, had a cable break, and they, we were advised to close it off. And so the idea is to gather everybody's input um, for what we should do as a replacement. And we're fortunate enough to have David Raphael and Bob Neal here to help us with this process, and amongst other folks, including Wiz Dow who's going to tell us about the history of this bridge, right? Mm -hmm. And next, I think. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Can you all hear me? No. no, no, no. <laughs> okay. okay. When you have a community on both sides of the river, you need bridges. The first information we have about a footbridge in Hardwick appears in a Montpelier newspaper published in August of 1833 when it announced that Emerson Brush has erected a bridge across the river near the Hayscales, which they said must be a great convenience to the public. Unfortunately, we don't know where the Hayscales were. But I'm guessing that they were somewhere over in the right over there. Were they? Yeah. Right over there? Okay. From the village restaurant, if you sit next sit on the windows, you can look down at the river and you can see a butt of what used to be a dam that went across the river up against the you know, the base of the parking lot there. From the middle of the 1800s, it powered a grist mill that occupied the area that's now used by the village restaurant and its parking lot. There was a mill, there were stores, there were a couple houses over there. Uh, the road has been widened, and so it's hard to imagine how much building there was there, but there was a fair amount. The water backed up behind the dam and up through the village beyond the corner, and that's what I want you to look at in picture one, is how still the water of the river is. That's because it was actually a pond. Emerson Brush, the man who built the first footbridge, lived up there where Bert Hoover does, just up on top of this hill. That's okay, I know it's a pond. So Brush lives up there, and he has a drugstore over on Main Street. But in order to get to it, he had to go around the, the North Main Street Bridge and got tired of it. So he put in a footbridge. Sometime in 1883. In January of 1885, the bridge was destroyed, and so in May, he put in another one. In November of 1886, ice threatened his bridge, and so he marshaled a line of men with poles to stand on his bridge and break up the ice or push it down under the bridge rather than allow it to be taken out. 
And understand that was a pond, and so the movement was not the rushing river that we're used to seeing here. And he could get away with that. So he won that battle, but he conceded the war. In January 1887, he took in his bridge for the winter, and he did that on a regular basis after that. Brush wasn't the only one who built bridges. George B. Shipman owned a sawmill up where the motel is. That whole area was a sawmill area. And Shipman lived where Mike and Melissa Carr lived, at the corner of Maple Street, Depot Street, and, and Church Street, that yellow house. So Shipman built a footbridge across the river up by the mill to make it convenient to get to home. He also had to rebuild his bridge regularly. Until 1903, all footbridges seemed to have been built up the river and by individuals, at least any that I found in the newspapers. However, in 1903, the Woodbury Grand Company, which had its sheds down with Atkins Field, and the last of its shed is that big number four down there, won a contract to build the biggest granite building. It was the biggest granite contract ever let at the time. So they had 24 months to cut, to quarry, cut, finish, and put in place 400,000 cubic feet of granite. Well, they scrambled to get workers, and they placed them any place they could find to place them. And anybody who lived on this side of the river, in order to get down to Atkins Field, would either have to use the North Street Bridge, North Main Street Bridge, or Brush's Bridge. And that's a long way to get down to Atkins Field. And so in 1803, the town, and I suspect that Woodbury Granite Company instigated this, the town instructed the selectmen to construct a bridge across the Lamoille to Wilkett Street. We don't know where it went across the river. Um, and wouldn't you know, the ice took it out in the winter of 1804. But the newspaper, in 1904, the newspaper reported that in May of 1904, the workers who used the bridge had fixed it. They had to get to work. They didn't have time to wait for the town, and so they just did it. <laughs> the war with the river continued in 1905 when the Gazette announced that the Wolcott Street Bridge has been constructed. Now, maybe that was a new one, or maybe that was just again. In July 1906, Somebody was putting a footbridge across the river at Elm Street. Meanwhile, one block down the street, the town was putting in an iron bridge to serve both foot and wheel traffic. And I suspect the Granite Company was behind that, too. Because to get from any place up in here, you had to use the North Street, North Main Street Bridge if you were going to get down, down to the uh, sheds. So there's nothing more in any of the newspapers about bridges in Hardwick until March of 1915 when the voters at town meeting instructed the selectmen to spend no more than $350, which is roughly $9,000 today, to build a bridge from the, the Gazette building, which is where it is today, over to the Daniels block. Sam Daniels had just purchased this building. I do not know whether that bridge, whether Brush's bridge was still in place. There's no mention of it, and we don't know. It could be that it had been taken out. You know, Brush may have died, and so they needed the bridge. But Sam Daniels wanted a bridge to get from his foundry over into the center of the village. The town voted $350. Sam Daniels would pay for the rest. Um, Sam Daniels was an aggressive and talented inventor. 
and he appears to have some understanding of basic engineering because it's highly likely that he designed the bridge and he definitely took, con took control of the construction of it. The thing about the Daniels Bridge, which I think was different from most of the others, and if you look at picture two, you can see this. Look how close to the water that bridge is. Well, Sam put in concrete abutments and sank his post into that, which put it above the water a good deal. Understand the water was higher then because that was a, that was a pond backed up by the by the you know backing the water up from the mill. Um, he claimed the bridge, and I suspect that the select board gave him the right to control the bridge. He put, you can see when you get out, you can see that there's a place up there. He put up a sign that said, private way, use at your own use. And when I think of the number of stories I've heard about people falling off the bridge into the drink, um, he meant it. It was, it was a good thing to do. Once a year, he would close the bridge to all traffic, to assert and, and maintain, perhaps he had to do that to maintain his authority, but the bridge was closed one day a year. A headline in the Harvard Gazette sums up the spring flood of 1927. 36 to 40 hours of rainfall caused large and small streams to overflow. Highway and railroad bridges swept away. Houses washed downstream and destroyed. River channels changed, landscape and roadways changed. Thousands and thousands of dollars of damage, no lives lost, and no one injured in murder. Probably because of its flexibility, the Daniels Bridge survived intact, despite the tons of logs. Remember, there was a sawmill up where the motel is now? It got completely wiped out. All of those logs and lumber were swept down the river, there were a couple of houses on the back of Mill Street that were also swept down the river. The houses banged into the Iron Bridge, which in 1923, just four years before, had been put across the North Main, uh, North Main Street Bridge. The houses banged into that, broke apart, and went under the bridge and came down to this bridge. And it was severely knocked about, according to the newspapers, but it remained intact. It, it did not break in any way. Sam Daniels Bridge outlasted the 1906 Iron Bridge down at Church Street, it, which died in 1964. Some of you may remember that flood. Age 58, it outlasted the 1923 Iron Bridge on Main Street, which was replaced in 2000 at the age of 77. The Sam Daniels Bridge died last year of old age. It was 105. Thank you very much, Wiz. I appreciate that. Um, it, fascinating history. Um, I want to introduce um, Bob Neal now. Um, again, my name is David Raphael. I'm a landscape architect and sort of helping with this. Um, Bob had, uh, and his company, Engineering Ventures, had done a, 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 an engineering report on the bridge. And I'd like Bob maybe to say a few words and speak to that uh, as a precursor to our uh, upcoming discussion. Thanks, David. Yeah. Uh, yes, as David said, um, uh, I, I did. A, I was actually the, uh, the second opinion to a, uh, an initial report that came up, and uh, the bridge had been closed by the time I got here, and I went through the bridge and found many of the same conclusions, and uh, 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 the issues with the bridge are mostly deterioration. Uh, there's a, uh, a broken cable, there's uh, the steel supports underneath. Uh, some, some of them have rusted, some of them, have, uh, many of them have rusted, and some of them have broken. And uh, so the, the decision was made to, uh, to close the bridge. And uh, so now we're in that spot trying to figure out what the options are to replace that. And so we're looking at, um, we really haven't gotten really anywhere down the road to try to figure out what to do next. But there are a lot of different options. Um, 
There are prefabricated bridges that uh, you see on a lot of bike paths and things like that. They're usually that brown core 10 steel, um, and they're they're functional. They're not that attractive. Um, there's uh, there's certainly options with rebuilding something similar to uh, to what's here, uh, and there's also there are some repair options. Uh, I think with the level of deterioration, the uh, uh, the amount of money that would have to go in to do a repair, it would really make sense to uh, move into a rebuild because I think the, uh, the the length of time that you would get uh, a repair to work for you uh, wouldn't really pay pay for itself. So we're in this mode where we're headed towards a, a new design uh, and uh, look forward to see what ideas people have. Any questions for Bob about, I mean, he put together, his company put together this report, which had some detail and some photographs. Obviously, you can see the, the cable that snapped. Um, any questions for Bob about his report or the status of the bridge? And I don't know from anybody. Please, Patrick. Yeah. Bob, can you talk about any components of the existing assembly that can be reused potentially? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, yeah, uh, the, uh, I, I, if we go into a complete uh, redesign or rebuild, and uh, there, there is the option of uh, reusing the concrete supports. Uh, the one on this side of the river looks like it's in pretty good shape. The one on the other side of the river, uh, the one that's out a little bit, uh, would need some refurbishing, I believe. Uh, the anchors are a possibility to reuse if you end up going with a suspension bridge. It would they would likely need to be tested um, to make sure that um, that they do still meet their requirements. Uh, but I think that you know, the, if we're going to rebuild the bridge, the materials you know, you want to design this for another hundred years, and uh, so I, I think you would you be doing mostly replacement of the, the decking and the steel supports and the cables. Any other questions or comments for Bob while we, we got up here? Please. I'm just curious. I assume the town hired you. Yes. Do you have a recommendation? Yes, uh, a recommendation for. I mean, is it all based on cost estimates? Or? Well, uh, I, I I laid out uh, in my report. I laid out a few options. Mm -hmm. I, I uh, my I, I was actually hired through uh, the Preservation Trust of Vermont. They provided a grant to the town to uh, pay for half of my services. Um, I do a lot of that with the Preservation Trust, so it, it's a, uh, um, there's really an assessment that, so the, the recommendations are, at this point, wide open. Uh, so I, I give it an option for repair, and then I, I gave a range for some ideas on what you could do to rebuild it. So uh, I don't have a specific recommendation at this point. That's what we're here to figure out. Yes? I'm, I'm just wondering how much of the area on either side of the bridge does the town own and control? How much of that can be incorporated? Um, any idea? I don't. Eric, can you weigh in on that or something? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I asked the wrong question. So, so I, I don't. I don't know for sure. Um, but my understanding is that the town owns the bridge. Yeah. Okay. I don't know for sure, but my understanding is the town owns, like, to the edge of the pavement, sort of over here. And goes straight out, right? Apparently, the end of the tent across. Oh, the end of the tent. Yeah, well, it's the way, I don't think Wayne is here, but yeah. the end of the tent across. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Do you know? I don't remember that. <laughs> I don't remember. I know the bridge went one end to the other, but it's not far enough. Right. The grass. Yeah. So the grass is sort of the, the, grass. the line. Right but the it, and it's sort of a straight line yeah. if you yeah. extend it, right? Yeah, and on the other side, to, over to the river, to the yeah. back way. Yeah. 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 Well, right. Okay. So okay. including those parking places. So essentially, only the parking places over there go with the Daniels building. Is that right? Right. So you'd have to leave access to the parking lot over there. Yeah, we wouldn't yeah. want to extend the bridge right to the building. No, but <laughs> <laughs> why not? I know. <laughs> no, I mean, but this, you know, this area could be used as a lovely something. Parking. Yeah. Lovely parking. 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 
down there, that tears down to the river, okay. could be made into more of a park. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I mean, I know we all love parking. But we need to love more than just parking. That's all. <laughs> we have another question, please. You have a question? Yeah, please. Okay, so if this were redone completely as it is, made it a little wider for a wheelchair, um, is that one of the options? Yes. Absolutely. So that it still swings. I had it as a kid and I loved. I love swinging. <laughs> yeah. Right. All right. Great. Absolutely. Okay. Do you know this is a tape? That's this is recorded. Oh, too late. Any other comments or questions uh, before I kind of take over here? Okay. Um, well, thank you. Um, so actually, now we do have this opportunity to really think about what this bridge could be, and I think. You know, right now it's a good opportunity to think big uh, in terms of not necessarily worrying about cost. Obviously, cost will be a factor. But as I was saying to the group uh, across the bridge just earlier, uh, you know, it's a, it's a tremendously opportune time to be building infrastructure and recreational infrastructure and village infrastructure uh, here in Vermont. Uh, as we all know, we're coming out of uh, the pandemic. Um, there has been an incredible um, sort of surge in interest in walking, biking, uh, villages, recreation. Um, we're seeing it all around the country. And with that has been an accompanying surge of monies that are available to work on and build these types of, of elements, infrastructure, parks, so forth. You know, as I was saying to the group, I just got an email yesterday from the Vermont Outdoor Recreation Economic Collaborative. Um, they're uh, beginning to uh, re um, start their grant program. Uh, there's money, you know, as probably some of you know, coming from the federal government. Um, it's it's our money. I mean, it's our taxpayer money. So um, we should hopefully take advantage of that. Um, but I, I guess I, I would like to just start before I kind of introduce what we're going to do next uh, with one of my favorite Vermont jokes. Um, and I think it's very appropriate right now, and probably most of you have heard it, but I'm going to say it again because I love it. Um, and that is, um, how many Vermonters does it take to screw in a light bulb? It takes three. One to actually screw in the light bulb, and two to reminisce about the old one. <laughs> and that's actually what we've just been doing. And you know, this is, this is a very cool bridge. Uh, Bill Hill here was telling me about his uh, rebuilding it, and, and this is a labor of love, and yet I sense it is a real kind of focal point and, and feature that makes Hardwick unique and special. And I've seen bridges here in Vermont become destinations for people just to come and walk across a bridge and experience the river or the lake in the case of, of one bridge I'm thinking of. So now is our opportunity to kind of think about what kind of bridge we should replace this with. And we've already gotten feedback from people today and before today, those of you who went online and, and you know answered some questions, um, that you know the bridge could be anything from something that basically mimics this, but uh, to your point, maybe is wider to allow for bikes or, or wheelchairs or places to pause at on the bridge. It could be a covered bridge. It could be a really incredibly artistically designed bridge. There are some spectacular examples of both vehicular and pedestrian bridges. And so I want you all now, um, in the next half hour, 45 minutes, um, to kind of take a look at that idea of what this bridge could be. And to help us do that, um, we, are, we have a couple handouts here that, um, uh, and, and, and some questions we want to ask all of you about, and, and the, the questions are also on the table there we can distribute. Um, and what we're going to do, and I hope you're okay with this, is we sort of got our tables, I mean our chairs set up in three different uh, groupings. Um, maybe a few people can sort of move their chairs and go over here because I'd like to kind of break us into three groups and have the three groups kind of gather together, maybe talk about and, and, and think about these questions. Um, you know, the first one is based on the premise that the bridge will be, well, that we've changed it to be repaired or replaced. It's going to be replaced. The, the select board's already made that decision. Um, based on the premise that the bridge will be, be replaced, what is your preferred solution for the bridge replacement? 
Um, so disregard uh, item A, uh, but, but B, C, and D are questions uh, that you can consider. And to help us look at that, and each of you individually look at it or talk about it in your group, um, we've got uh, a handout here. I think we've got almost enough for everybody uh, that shows two different sides, everything from sort of a traditional Vermont covered bridge to something that actually looks a lot like the bridge that's here today, a couple examples like that, to some other really unique uh, and different kinds of designs on, on the other side of the page. So I think this is an opportunity to think big and, and maybe not at this point worry so much about cost. I mean, obviously I don't wanna ignore that or say that's not gonna be an issue, but it's amazing what you can do with you know, creative thinking, uh, you know, uh, creative engineers like, like Bob and, and, and other planners. So that's number one is, and the most important thing is, what do you as, as residents uh, and, and people here in Hardwood who use this bridge, who have used that bridge there, what would you like to see, you know, replace this bridge? Um, so, um, you know, and again, one of the answers could be something that looks just like that or with some changes or something totally different, you know, like a covered bridge. So you didn't have to shovel it in the winter. Or, um, you know, and there's an example one I'm sure you all are familiar with, right in Stowe, um, right on Main Street, there's a little covered bridge there that's for pedestrians. So that's a kind of an example of what that might look like. So um, we're gonna pass out um, this sheet, and then there's two more questions we wanna ask you, which are, um, as I mentioned across the way, um, there's an opportunity uh, and, and we've talked about that already, to think about what happens on this side of the river and the space that the town has. And I think you know you can have a win-win a situation, I would argue, that um, we can still keep parking here, but also maybe eke out or, or create some more space um, you know, for people to use and people to hang out at. Um, again, across the way, you know, somebody mentioned and talked about it, uh, you did, Mike, about uh, you know, quiet space or, or getting down to the river, seeing the river, that type of thing, access, uh, if we can do it. Um, you know, with the only qualification that we do have to think a little bit about environment and, and river, uh, riverfront, riverside environment, but I think it's a chance to just sort of brainstorm on that. So that would be the second question. And then the final uh, you know, kind of question in all of this is, um, you know, what other things should we be thinking about or that you would like the town to look at as we, um, you know, think about the future of this bridge? What, what else could happen here or should happen here in relation to the bridge? Because again, when we go to build a new bridge, you know, we're going to have to re-envision, re you know, how we access it on this side or the other side. You know, maybe there's an opportunity to enhance the little sitting area on the Main Street side of the bridge. So um, would love your thoughts and input on that. And um, I guess uh, if we could now, uh, well, before I say that, we do have some great refreshments. So if you want to take a two minute break and, and get some cookies or buy some lemonade over there, which is very cool. Um, although I will say that we do have one solution already that's been uh, provided here to the group. Uh, you might want to take a look at uh, before we're through. It's kind of cool, a, a little model of something of a, of a bridge idea. So I'd like you know folks to kind of group here in, in, in this in this third and maybe bring a couple chairs. You folks could stay here. Maybe you can turn your chairs around. Um, maybe uh, Eric and, and Shari and, and Wiz who are here could maybe help orchestrate the, the group. Um, we have flip charts if people want to write some things down. Uh, but what I would love everybody to do before you leave is take one of these sheets and mark you know, we've got markers all over the place, and if you need a marker, holler. Um, maybe tell us what would be your top three choices. You know, one being your preferred choice, two being your, uh, you know, second best, and third. Or, if you're not seeing anything here that, you know, you think is appropriate or strikes your fancy, tell us something else, you know, to look at or think about. So, that's what I like to do. Uh, maybe we can sort of set up in the next five minutes. I uh, will bring a flip chart over, um, I'll walk around, we can distribute these and the questions and you know maybe take the next uh, 45 minutes to um, sort of think about that and talk among ourselves about that and then we'll kind of reconvene and see what people had to say. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Any, any questions or thoughts about that? 
Okay, hearing none, let's just take, let's reconvene in five minutes. Let's get some people over here. I'll pass these out and we'll go from there. Do like the idea of a shirt shape, the heart shape, the curve, 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 the so that's very modern. Too modern. Okay, so we like the curve on the first one, maybe, but nothing else. LA. This one's too modern. Landscape architecture. And what about number three, the laminated wood truss? All the you got. Definitely. I think it's really cool looking. All right, I think it's cool looking too. I think Mary's saying. I think it's unique and would be a kind of attraction. To tell, but I think the same about Ridge too. You do? I do. Yeah. I, I'm not sure. Too. I, for for Hardwick, that type like of I said, I think it's unique and yeah. would draw people to town. So I'm throwing it out like as a. Uh, at, at some point, modernity is going to come to Hardwick. It didn't come with the redesign of the library. Who knows if it'll come with the redesign of the bridge. But also what I hear you saying is something unique could be really great to try. Yeah. It could. Yeah. And so I just, I think whether this is, I'm not suggesting this particular bridge, but, and I think three is unique. Three would be a draw as well. I want to um, so people know what wayfinding is, what wayfinding represents. It literally means finding your way. And a lot of villages and downtowns in Vermont are installing signs to get people to parking lots so they're easy to access. And then signs or maps to show them where they walk from the parking lots to get here or to the center of town or to wherever they want to go. And so right now I'm working in three different communities that are designing and installing vehicular signs, pedestrian signs, welcome signs, and pedestrian signs, and kiosks with maps. It's a whole suite. So if you go to Burlington, you'll see their wayfinding program that's in place on Church Street and around the city. Um, if you're at the UVM campus, there are pedestrian signs, and map kiosks, and uh, vehicular signs to get you to parking lots. That's what wayfinding is all about. And you know, for tourists coming to Hardwick who've never been here and don't know where to park or where to go, it's an incredibly valuable piece of infrastructure. Yes. Yeah. I'm hearing, I'm hearing bigger support from our downtown merchants. <laughs> We just want to take about five or ten minutes um, for each group to sort of summarize the, the key takeaways. And you know, uh, I mean, if, if Sherry's comfortable, Eric's comfortable, and Dave comfortable, I'm going to pass uh, this over to them, and we'll start. You know, group one, group Dave's two, group three. Yeah. Yes, um, I'm sure I've grabbed cookies so I'm last. <laughs> yeah. So again, thank you. This has been great. I really appreciate your time and taking a Saturday and coming out. Uh, this is this is classic sort of Vermont. I think democracy at work here and we're going to take all this feedback and work it into the next steps and, and I don't know Eric if, or, or if you or Sherry want to make a comment in that regard, uh, that would be wonderful. But I'm going to give it to Sherry first. You're kidding me. That's close. Yeah. Yeah, just yeah, just so so let's have let's have everybody's attention for just a few more minutes as we wrap this up. In our group, the overall the overall um, theme, let's say, was um, that we are very fond of the original bridge. So I think we settled on um, a suspension bridge style preference with um, lights, permanent lighting. Um, we are in favor of river access and we want more signage and ways for people to find their way around to the, to the this side of the bridge for the future. We're hoping for some river access um, places to contemplate or like this 
really cute little thing that I just did. Um, little maybe overlooks to the shape of the bridge, maybe not just some straight on both sides bridge. Um, you know, cantilever it out, whatever. Um, a custom bridge that will be unique to us so that people want to see it. It's an attraction now and it will be an attraction in the future, hopefully. Um, I think that's about it. Did I miss anything? We yeah, want not, some nothing cheesy. Nothing cheesy. Nothing cheesy. That's going to be the headline. Um, yeah. 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 So, I think you can put a jack yeah. movement. Yeah. 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 Hey, yeah. cheesy is for hell. And it's also true, I collected all of the, the uh, surveys or questionnaires from folks that couldn't be here today, and it was the overall desire for some, somehow maintaining that some sort of movement. But I personally think that we could mimic that with some sort of kinetic public art thing that moves. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> possible. <laughs> I'm presenting for group two, the local folks over here in the middle. Um, is this working? Yeah. So, uh, we, we mentioned the importance of the connection to the rail trail. Um, winter maintenance was a big thing, and so we thought maybe uh, that would be facilitated if the bridge could uh, allow the skid steer toolpath thing to pass over for snow removal. That might be a quick way to have it be safer in the um, winter. Uh, our group feels that the bounce and swing is not necessary. Uh, we do like the we do like the visual, the aesthetics of the current bridge. We like a, a suspension style bridge. Um, if visibility through the bridge out down to the river and up to the sky are important. Um, cascading evergreens are flowers. And similar to group one, we said, what if there were? It would look like a normal suspension bridge, but if there were a flare or something in the middle where you could maybe hang out, um, and it would be unique. Unique and yet traditional, all in one. I think that's somehow what people want. Um, uh, bike parking on both sides. We need a, we need a quite a bit more width. Um, do, 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 do. A current bridge is only four feet two inches wide. It's quite narrow. Uh, we shouldn't put any salt on the bridge. Oh, we had great ideas for reforming this. Moving the parking back, green space, pavilion with Wi-Fi, electricity, picnic tables, money's no object, EV charging. All right, that's what we have. Terrific. Okay, so group three decided the way it's going to be. So that was very nice. <laughs> so we are exactly in the same thing. Wider, at least two people. That was an issue. Um, Year-round use and maintenance was an issue, however re it's resolved, but that's got to be uh, cleared of snow and ice type of situation. Um, accessible for all, and somebody pointed out, yeah, ADA is going to be accessible for all, but it's important. Snow removal again, um, come in, um, accommodate bikes. And it means to accommodate bikes not only go across, but the idea that we have the rail trail finishing up. So this area in here should be kind of like bike racks. And somebody said, yeah, bike maintenance stations, I guess they have that you could hang your bike up and you know, there's some tools. People have said, you tune up your bike, you know, type of a thing like that. Um, in case, what do you happen to if you're a serious biker and you need it? Um, Anyways, benches, picnic tables, anything, they can go under that pavil pavilion that Eric's going to pay for. Um, and, okay, same thing, observational opportunity on the bridge itself, so the same idea is it's going to be wide enough, you can stand and look with people behind you or something, like they said, your bump outs. Um, optimize the entrance areas on both sides. In other words, not just here it is, but have something that kind of guides people to it and have it kind of incorporated on both sides. Um, uh, some people are uncomfortable with the sway, and that's ADA again, is it? Um, historic, respectful, but not a rock. 
so that was kind of where we were. Um, invites accessibility, access to the river, and um, when we talk about what we see down here, a terraced area with like paths going down so that the uh, wheelchair accessibility ramp would be down to the first terrace and then it'd be down to the second terrace. And also, if the river's coming up um, with flooding, you could kind of um, use the each terrace, understanding the lowest one's going to go into water occasionally or very often. And Dave paid for that right? after Eric. <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's only money. Um, let's see. Uh, green space surrounding. So, big thing is to really maximize how much green space, shade, trees, everything around on this side and that side. So the whole area is a park kind of feel to it. Um, uh, so before we could really get into it, the question about cost factors, we didn't say A, B, or C, but we looked at it and we all agreed that attractiveness is important because that equals income business to town. In other words, you know, cheap, yeah, we got it done, is it really cost effective because we're losing out on that draw? And people talked about how much people come here, they like the bridge, they see the bridge, uh, have for quite a while. So make it attractive so it's a draw. Um, ease of maintenance is important. Uh, durability, in other words, spend money so that it lasts a long time. We got a hundred year goal, you know, for this last one. Um, max maximize the one-time federal dollars that are available. So that's the other thing is, let's go now since the you know, infrastructure seems to be the thing. Um, there was a thing about high flood level resilience. In other words, we should expect that it's going to be ugly here occasionally and that the bridge should be able to handle that. Um, uh, the style, we, we uh, more of what we didn't want at first and then we got to kind of what we wanted. Um, not the red example, if you saw it on there. Oh. Another yeah, 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 my favorite one. Yeah. Uh, my favorite. Yeah. Um, and also, um, just as a general one, is not like the Cotton Street Bridge. We don't want something that, you know, is like, oh, look, you can put it over and look at, you know, it works. We're going, no, we, that we need a small version of that. Um, and then basically, seven, eight, and four. Um, it would, the seven and eight are variations on open um, covered bridge, covered bridge helping with the maintenance and the tradition and such. Um, and, uh, and I believe uh, number four was the idea that it's a suspension with steel and um, but still had that nice wooden decking. Which so that's pretty much where we ran. And that's it. Okay. Um, great, thank you. Um, any any last questions or comments? We have Bob here, uh, so if there are any structural questions, we, we asked Bob, for example, um, about loading and, and whether you know we can run a sidewalk plow over it. And, and actually, his comment was, I don't want to put words in your mouth, Bob, but that, that most of the loading was in the bridge structure itself, and then in the winter snow. Correct? Is correct. Yeah. Okay. So that, that was just a, an interesting point, I thought. Any any questions or comments? Uh, yeah, from can folks, I please? time frame on this? Yeah, what's that? Time frame in terms of... Well, I'm going to maybe turn this over to Eric. I will okay. just tell you what, what, what happens next uh, from my end is that we're going to take all these good comments, the sheets and so forth, your your, your preferred comments, and I will be submitting a, a very brief and, and straightforward report to the select board that kind of summarizes where we ended up today, but also catalogs all the various comments because there have been some wonderful ideas today just going around and, and, and visiting with the groups I was really taken by some of the, the thinking that went into it and again this is a tremendous opportunity Eric do you want to just make one one or two comments about what happens next from the select board's perspective thank you uh, so, uh, <coughs> so the short answer is I don't know we don't have a firm time frame, time frame. Uh, we have we have, the select board is committed to use up to $200,000 of town funds out of our fund balance. We've committed, uh, we've, or we've been able to repurpose uh, a grant that we received from USDA to work on the rail trail, but now the rail trail is being built by the trans by the state. So that's uh, another 175,000 coming down here. And I believe we're still waiting to hear uh, 200, 200 or 250. 
$200,000 grant, uh, federal, another federal grant. Uh, unfortunately, we submitted our application on time and then they pushed the application deadline, which has pushed the whole decision thing down the road, so we're still waiting. Anyway. The last check was in a couple of weeks, so that was a couple of weeks. Yeah, so we can hear. I checked on Friday and no one else. So, if we can get to a design, we're close to having a fair amount of funding, and maybe we could get to building something um, next, year. next year. Yeah. But in that grant part of taking this one out, no, I yeah. want the microphone. Taking this one, I'm just going to take two sentences. Taking this one out in that grant was supposed to happen this fall, but we don't know whether we got the grant. So we're waiting on some grant funds. We potentially could get other infrastructure funds if, if needed. You know, if this ends up being more expensive. But I think um, uh, another thing I heard in my group is that people are people that came today are very interested in this process. And so, do we have a list of folks that are here? So maybe we could create that on the way out so that we can help um, keep people. Uh, inform and allow, allow folks who are interested to, to stay involved in this process. So like, yeah, before anybody leaves, we want to public. What's that? Select board meetings are always open to the public. <laughs> so it is possible to actually come to one, uh, but uh, but we can try to reach out as well. process Bob I want to put you on the spot one more time okay so let's say you know the, the, the town's successful in getting funds select board says we want to move forward we've got a consensus of what we want to do your comments well stay uh, well you know um, noted so you know a whole plan is, is created just for the bridge but also the environs but the bridge you know to rebuild the bridge you got to engineer it you got a permit What's a realistic time frame for that, would you say? I mean, if you can... Year and a half, two years, probably. Okay. I mean, because would this have to go through Act 250? I don't know. I don't think so. I, I, I'm, I'm going to say probably not. But it will have to go through some state permitting because you're, we're going to have to deal with riverfront you know, changes and, and, yeah, and uh, yeah, my suggestion operation. would be to, you know, in terms of permitting, to start with just the bridge because uh, when you start to do some of the, <laughs> right. the terracing and you start working down into the river, riverway, then um, you know, you've got some uh, some waterway permits to deal with. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, you know, you, you might be able to shortcut it. I, I know. Um, you know, if you went to uh, somebody today to say, start designing this, uh, you know, you need uh, uh, you need to come up with a concept, a design, you know, and that's going to involve some more community input, uh, you know, architectural design, and kind of what does it look like, and uh, and that's going to take several months at least to get that that taken care of. So you have a concept. Uh, it just takes time, and then. Uh, uh, you know, the engineering, um, if you could just start from beginning to end, that's probably, in, probably less than six months, but it never goes that literally. <laughs> there's, there's cost estimates, there's back and forth, there's uh, state review. Uh, so, you know, I, I think you'd be hard pressed to get this, if you started now, to be you might be able to bid it and have it cons start construction next year. If That's you what we want. To if you can find a contract. <laughs> so it sounds to me like one of the two next steps is for the select board with the community to kind of pull all this together and say, here's here's what we're going to do going forward, and this is the kind of bridge we're going to we're going to work towards. I think, uh, as Nancy said, you know, maybe you you, you include a, a planning vision for the whole piece. 
but you really separate the bridge project so that that can move ahead without other permit issues clouding that process. So, yeah. Okay. Please. Something just occurred to me hearing that this bridge is going to be torn down, and it didn't occur to me until Dave was talking about respectful to history. But could, as part of this, the stanchions on one side or other of the bridge remain and become a historic reference? I, I, anyway, just a thought. To, as yeah, I, we could put them in the granite sheds. Well, you know, it's interesting. I was just down at the Crown Point Bridge this week. And I, if any of you know the Crown Point Bridge, it's down in Addison, and it connects New York to Vermont. It's a very popular, very important bridge. When they took down that old historic bridge, which was a historic structure, they took the abutments, or, or one of, not the abutments, one of the structural underpinnings, and it's now sitting right next to the new bridge. So you can go down and see what the old bridge was constructed of. And it's a wonderful kind of interpretive opportunity. And I could see taking this structure and just putting it as part of the entrance or a side right here on site and make it part of the experience. Part of the pavilion. There you go. Absolutely. <laughs> Way to go. Yes, Eric. We did include, on our list, we did include maybe using the ends of um, whatever they're called, trusses, because they have that star in the um, top support. Yeah. Thing. Cool. Maybe uh, some things with Eric for Great. Okay, so Sherry's just circulating a list so we can get all your names and keep you appraised. Um, if there aren't any more questions or comments, again, thank everybody. Wonderful. We'll be here for a few minutes. Great to have you.